Stop the cap. You know, there was something I wanted to get to the bottom of. So I decided to listen to feminist theory videos on YouTube, jumping around from video to video, hoping that somebody could give an, excl an explanation of what the fuck they're talking about. I have no clue what the fuck they're talking about. Uh, you know, it's like a word salad. I don't know how many times they're going to say the word, you know, respectability. And then they like make up words that don't even exist. You know, you know, like a, a, a doma, domicility, domicility. Like what, the, what, what are you talking about? You know, and, and it's like, and, and they use these words repeatedly to the point, and, and they say, interestingly enough, or, you know, uh, in, in contrast to, to this, like, like it, it, I mean, I don't know what they were talking about. You know, and and I and I consider myself a fairly intelligent person, and I don't know what they were talking about. It was it was it was just a word salad. I imagine this is what Dr. T. Hassan Johnson deals with on a regular basis. But I mean, it's just an absolute word salad. Um, the other thing is, are, are all these women gay? Are all these women LGBTQ, queer, whatever? Like, is that what is that what's going on here? You know, I heard people, you know, like, I heard people say that, you know, but I figure that's just some dismissive shit that, you know, men would throw up because they don't like, you know, what these women are saying, which I don't even know what they're saying. But, you know, probably because they have short haircuts or, you know, just they just labeling them a bunch of man haters. But I, I'm I, like, I'm like, OK, feminism is supposed to be about heteronormative cisgendered women and whatever their grievances are with men. Why are all these scholarly, I already know the answer to the question, but I'm saying, why are all these scholarly um, women that are espousing feminism, uh, uh, why do they simultaneously espouse all this LGBTQ transgenderism and everything else? See, and this, this is my issue with, you know, a lot of these, uh, these black queer feminists, you know, in the space, because I said that they already ruined the space for themselves. And this is why you have all this stuff with the transgender, you know, uh, um, uh, women running around calling black women fish and, you know, saying that they're real women and, and that you're just intimidated by me because I'm beautiful. I'm more beautiful than you, bitch. You know, all this other stupid shit. Right. That's that. that I mean, they already ruined the space for themselves, you know, and, and then, you know, when we get to the 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 challenging white supremacy you know they 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 also additionally were the ones that you know pioneered and came in the space with the black and brown coalition black and yellow coalition when there, there there isn't one there isn't one they don't fuck with us and we don't fuck with them okay uh but there's this all this you know bringing everybody into the building that aren't even a part of this conversation you know like like and, and that's the whole thing that that's that's one of the reasons why um, you know, the, the, the black feminism really doesn't have, you know, a place, you know, to have a voice, you know, with black men or, or, or have an audience with black men, because if, if you're into women and you're gay, you know, then, then what your grievances are with men, right. Have, have, have nothing to do with all this, like other gay shit that, you, that you're, that you're on, right? Like I'm thinking you got grievances with men. Okay. You know, it's a perspective that I didn't understand or that I didn't see. And maybe we could work, we could work this out. I, we didn't know that you were so upset about, you know, exhibit a, right. But no, no, no. These, these women are talking all this, you know, gay and gender fluidity and all this other stuff. I'm like, I thought the problem was the patriarchy. I thought the problem was, was black men, you know, collectively coming together and doing some evil systemic shit against women to oppress women. But that's not what I'm hearing. That's what I thought I was going to hear. That's not what I'm hearing. You know what I mean? And then, you know, like Dr. T. Hassan Johnson pointed out in one of his recent videos, like these women, all they do is like, like when you talk about, okay, well, what's the issue? They go and they point out like individual acts of, of male violence against female violence. Or sometimes it doesn't even involve, you know, a black woman. It's, it's a, it's a black man who's beating up on a transgender woman and who knows whatever issues they got going on. We already talked about the transgender women that don't, you know, that don't, uh, you know, say what they are, you know, the transgender women that threaten to expose a man who's not ready to come out of the closet or doesn't want to be exposed, right? Because you can't ungay as a man, right? 
Um, you know, I've already talked about about that, but um, um, oh, what was I going to say about what Dr. T. Son Johnson pointed out? Hold on, I'm having a brain fart. Oh yeah, the the individual acts of violence. You know, and 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 the other thing is, is like this is what's so weird about like the whole feminism thing, right? Like, if if I listen to, let's just focus on the straight feminist. If I listen to the heteronormative cisgendered black feminist, right, they go into this idea that there was this like sort of systemic oppression of black women at the hands of the evil black men. Like, again, it's it's literally the embodiment of Danny Glover in the color purple. Right. But then when we have these conversations about right around the 1970s, rolling into the early 80s where black men were struggling, you know, to, you know, find employment due to deindustrialization that was going on, you know, in America, right? And this is where Cap, you know, gets on because he gets frustrated because yes, black men did give up their 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 power when they when they entered these sort of relationships with, you know, with these 50-50 dynamics or these dynamics where, you know, they they really, you know, either because they couldn't you know, uh, get the resources or they didn't want to, right? I would argue that majority of them couldn't get it, right? Because there at there was an actual uh, deindustrialization. There were the jobs were not available like that. You know, just as we're seeing now with the way that the markets are shifting and changing, and and wages have been stagnant, and people are even questioning now, you know, why should they even go to work if all they're going to do is be the working poor, right? You have educated people saying this now. But again, going back to the, you know, the 1970s and, you know, into the 80s, um, you know, there seemed to be this like the 50 50 dynamic was already there. Right. Because the men couldn't assert, quote unquote, patriarchy because they weren't gainfully employed like that. So you got, you know, one group of women that were that would complain about individual acts of violence of black men against black women. Right call that sexism, you know, men are bigger than women, so it's more likely to happen, right? But like they throw up this this image of the 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 financially superior uh, 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 and oppressive Danny Glover character, you know, right? But then when we get to the 70s and the 80s and you, and you talk to, you know, these women, even into the 90s, you know, you talk to these women, you know, black men, they were ripping and running in the streets. They never had their shit together. They never had this. They never had that. You know, but we were still having their babies. And, and you know, you had these dynamics where the men were, you know, you know, not operating in a patriarchal fashion, right? Operating on the 50-50 type of shit, right? And so that became the new norm. That became the new normal in the black community, which, you know... I was totally unaware of, but you know, that became, that became the new norm, right? Even, even in growing up in the household with the dynamics that I grew up in, you know, I just figured my family was, was, you know, an anomaly, right? I, I, I knew what, what, what the ex expectations were. And this is where I feel like there's a cultural difference. And this is, this is why, in my opinion, you see the divide, not the women always want to go to, ah, it's colorism. It, no, 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 no. This is where the cultural divide is, because the way that black boys are raised is is different than the way that the black girls are raised. The black girls are raised to basically facilitate matriarchy. Right. Which is why it's it's always silly to me when these women, like, but even women that, that are from the era of, you know, the the late 70s, 80s and 90s. Right. When they throw up these ideas of this Danny Glover character where it's like it seems like you don't even see black men in that type of position until you got to go back to, you know, post world war two, you know, when again, the manufacturing base of America was booming. When you go back then, then you see, you know, the dynamics. And again, it's closer to, um, you know, the, 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 the silent generation and, and those more traditional values, you know, being there where women didn't have a lot of career options, 
right? But you got women in, in the 90s and then in 2000s, right, with all this, you know, strong, independent, you go, girl, that always want to go back to some Danny Glover character when it comes to oppression. When I'm like, actually, you've had at least... You've had at least 30 years of black men uh, generally being on a much more equality, egalitarian type of type of situation. Both those men who were who were engaging in legal activity and those engaging in illegal activity. Okay, so I'm like th that is the population of men that you are familiar with and that you all were dealing with. Not this Danny Glover in the 19 you know uh, uh, 20s. You know that had you know you know 15 acres of of cornfields and lived in the big white house you know and 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 was sending out letters for some sort of mail order bride situation all right so i'm saying that i think that the the, the huge part of the divide you know comes in where you know black young black men you know because we have the most you know the edu most educated population of black people ever both male and female. OK. And and I know what I was sold. You know, I was sold, go to college, get an education and then there'll be Kerry Washington's wrapped around the block. You know, you'll 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 be making the money and you'll have the pick of the litter of the women of the black woman that you want, the black woman of your dreams. You know, because, you know, black women, especially, you know, 90s and the 2000s, all they were complaining about is niggas in jail, niggas is selling drugs, niggas is killing each other in the streets, niggas, 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 right? That's, that's what they were complaining about. So you thinking, you like, yeah, man, when I get on, man, these bitches is going to be on my nuts. And then basically that we would be able to have access to these women, just like the street dudes, but legitimately. And then eventually you would settle down and get married and everything else. And and you would get to put your hands on your hip and be the, the, the freaking patriarch, you know, that 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 women and the rest of the community, you know, admired. Right. That that's that's literally, you know, what we thought. And it was a very basic thought. You know, it wasn't it was didn't dive into the you got to control the economic landscape of the community and businesses and all that. other. That was already dead, you know, for us. You know, those in, in my generation, that was already dead. That shit was was gone, you know, by the 90s. I never grew up seeing it, black businesses on either side of any street anywhere. OK, you know, I thought that, you know, the economy was shifting to where, you know, you know, if you had an education, you got a high paying job and you were able to live, you know, this this, you know, upper middle class black lifestyle. And that was good enough for me. That was good enough for me. Raise the, you know, you freaking raise the kids. You you buy, you know, Christmas presents at Christmas time and shit and your birthdays and go to events, go to a couple trips a couple times a year. You fucking, you know, you get old and die, take a couple vacations and and that was it, right? And you pass the torch on to your kids and and that was it. I didn't have any problem with that. Okay. Um. But what was I going to say? What was I going to say about, uh, hold on, another brain fart. Oh, I remember. I got to go to the other side. But black women, y'all were taught you got to get your shit together because, uh, you know, a nigga ain't going to have nothing going on. And it, all this comparing yourselves to dusties and dudes in the streets. Like it was like it was like there's a complete miscommunication that there was even a population of sons that were being encouraged and told to go to school, get an education and everything else like that. Now, maybe because, you know, some of the sisters that were coming out of single parent homes, I came out of the two parent home, but the ones that came out of single parent homes, their brothers were ripping and running in the streets. So that's what they saw when they looked around young black men ripping and running in the streets. You know, they were able to, you know, get their decent grades and then go off and, you know, get their scholarship at school, even though that wasn't the majority of black women, despite the fact that we have this narrative that somehow that's the majority of black women. But when you go over there and you read, you know, uh, uh, Catherine Eden's book about, you know, why, you know, women in, in the lower socioeconomic realm prioritize uh, 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 babies over weddings, you know what I mean? Like, she totally dispels that shit. I mean, even that woman in Ohio, the 19-year-old chick that got uh, a, a shot by police officers for stealing a, a liquor bottle, you know, uh, you know, she pregnant at 19, at 19. Okay, we've been having these conversations for over 10 years, and yet we still got black women out here getting pregnant at 19. You see what I'm saying? But anyway, uh, you know, I'm just highlighting the fact that, like, for every for every you know educated scholarly black woman, you have 
hundreds, if not thousands of 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 you know black women that are the that you know inevitably will be the the red, the sexy reds and the sukihanas you know that are not doing that are not academically achieving while they're in school but we don't even talk about that population that population doesn't doesn't exist and i've talked about this before where you know you know uh, uh black scholarly men don't exist and the, the majority of black men are nothing but Ray Rays and Pookies. And then when you get over to the black women, let black women tell it. The majority of them are scholarly black women. And there's no sea of Sukihanas and sexy reds and stuff. And then black women turn around complaining about why their image is so negative. You know, not realizing like I'm like, you got the same problem as black men. Like you're in the minority. They don't see themselves as in the minority because, again, they're platformed and, you know, put on the front page of everything. And oh, this scholarly black. Oh, you're a feminist black woman. Oh, you 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 your rhetoric facilitates the demise of the patriarchal black family. Good, because we don't want strong black males that we have to have to you know, compete against our sons in the economic marketplace. Yes, yes, so we'll give you money and we'll, you know, put you up there, all that other stuff. And then these women sit up there and pretend like they don't see it. You know, and again, if they're lesbians or they're man haters, you know what I mean? You already know what type of time they're going to be on, right? But I'm just saying, like, we got two different messages. And then and the other thing is it's not a closed ecosystem. You know, where where, again, for a very long time, a lot of the things that black women do as mothers, you know, a lot of the stuff that black young black men have to put up with, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we don't like that you all do. And for a long time, it was just barbershop talk. And then that barbershop talk became Internet talk, you know, and a lot of you all still to this day cannot accept the reality of what brothers are saying about the things that you all do that we do not like. And then what even made it worse is the fact that, again, it's not a closed ecosystem. Once some of these brothers started stepping out, I call it the leaky bucket. You know, the black community has been like a leaky bucket. Like, I, and, then, and I was, um, you know, somehow I was discussing where, you know, I was like, because I, I look at the whole thing, like where black women are talking about black men's disloyalty and everything. They like to throw up colorism and all that other stuff, right? Which went on. Um, but, you know, the, the vast majority of black men, are, you know, have been with black women and are still with black women. But I think it, it, it the leaky bucket is what they didn't pay attention to for a long time. Like they had a bucket and it had a few small holes in it. And the few small holes were the brothers that were leaving and, you know, dating out and discovering, you know, other things and whatnot. And, and or even, you know, silently coming back and, you know, encouraging other br brothers. Hey, man, you need to go over here, man. Stop dealing with sisters, blah, 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 blah. Right. And then one day black women looked at that bucket and they were like, how did the water level get so low? And that's kind of like where we are now. Like, how did the water level, you know, get so low? And now, you know, you got you got dudes coming back literally like it's like they're trying to break a dam. They're they're, they're chipping away at that bucket, trying to trying to get all the rest of the water out of that damn bucket, which ultimately, whether, whether it's feminism is the vehicle to destroy the black community or whether it's black men discussing, you know, going abroad and not dealing with this. It, 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 at the end of the day, it's the same result. It's the demise of the black family, period. OK, but, um, <clears throat> um, you know, there's, there's two different cultures, you know, and I've, I've said this before. I was like, I was like, if you're raising girls to be strong, independent, all this other shit. And then you're raising boys to take on the responsibilities where they think that there is a reward system in that. Black boys are not when they think about taking on responsibility, you know, they look around. And this is where black women shit is fucked up, because the rest of the world is not on what black feminists are on. The rest of the world, yes, there's feminists in every group all around the world and shit like that. You always see some white women getting butt naked with, you know, letters written on her shirt, my body or something like that, running in front of the, uh, what is it, the, the nativity, you know, baby Jesus mural or something like that in front of the Vatican whenever they have something. There's always some protesting white women somewhere, right? Or even, you know, it's protesting women all around the world. It's protesting women in India. There's protesting women in Saudi Arabia with the domestic violence. There's protesting women in Korea. Like, there's protesting women all over the place, right? You see it all over the place. But I'm saying, you know, there's a difference in terms of, like, that whole conversation about, but are they grabbing the steering wheel? Having grievances with your men as a heteronormative cisgender woman and say, hey, stop doing this or stop abusing me, that's one thing. That's one thing. 
But to but to have this whole, you know, I am woman, hear me roar. We should be running things, calling the shots, you know, or then or then saying stupid, silly things like, you know, I want to be st- as strong as a man, but I only want to date men that are stronger. How the fu- how the fuck does that work? That doesn't work. You know, that th- this whole hypergamous equality thing, this whole state of confusion. Right. And then you have the whole aspect of like things that we did not know. OK, I didn't know that that, that y'all wanted your name on the side of the building. I didn't know that y'all, you know, wanted like when I hear women say my legacy, I cringe every time I hear a black woman say that my legacy. You know what I'm saying? Like 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 as though as though your last name is going on the back of that. And then you get the women that they put hyphens in their name and all this stuff. I'm like, I didn't know that y'all wanted to do all that. And see, the thing that was so fucked up was so was so fucked up about that is that has nothing to do with Danny Glover or even the men that were on the the, the, the 50 50 shit. The, the, in other words, that's a power play. That's women that wanted power. And I'm saying I'll acknowledge if if if, if women want that type of power, then, yeah, I guess that what men are doing or trying to do is going to look like oppression, right? You know, if, if I'm sitting there and I, I'm in a relationship with a woman, I'm thinking I'm going to put my name on the side of the building and then she feels some type of way because her name's not on the side of the building, right? Despite the fact that, you know, I'm the one out here that did all the work or whatever. Like, like, like I'm not prepared for that mentally. I'm like, oh, I didn't know. Like, again, same thing with the whole Ali Wong, even though I'm talking about an Asian woman, but I'm saying... You know, there are many black women that share that same sentiment. You know, that whole idea like, yeah, I'm successful. I got money and, you know, I, I'm doing this and and I should be able to go out there and get me a side piece like a dude. And I'm like, is that really what you want? You want to you want a side piece? You want you want a dude to get in the passenger seat of your car. Right. And, and, and again, like I said, the whole messed up thing with women is the hard wiring of women. Women tend not to be attracted. To, I don't care what they say. I don't care what they say, because even when you were just talking about, you know, straight uh, relationships between men and women, how do women size men up? Oh, I don't want to date this brother. Why? Because he's not tall enough to compare to these other men. I don't want to date this brother because, you know, he's not making enough money compared to these other men. Like there's always that comparing and trash and women want to get the best deal that they can get. But then suddenly you get these feminist women talking like they want a dude you know, to hop in their passenger seat. I'm like, doesn't that turn you off? Like, isn't that what your whole thing is? Right. And then it's confused. Right. Because we hear all this stuff about, you know, with the dudes that were on the 50 50 and what they can't demand, because that was that's the whole thing. Like a lot of this community talk of you all need to go all and build and this, that, and that. All of that came out of because we demanded submission. Right. Because, again, that those two different cultures at play, the miscommunication. We're thinking that, you know, we're being, you know, uh, taught the ideas and concepts of responsibility so that we can get, you know, positive and legitimate respect from black women and the entire community as a whole. We didn't know that it was that we were being taught. No, you must serve the matriarchy and anything that you demand or any expectation that you have is, uh, uh, you know, misogyny. Or any expectation that you have is the oppression of women and the patriarchy that we're trying to get away from because we want to hold on to this concept and this idea of Danny Glover and in the color purple. You know what I mean? And so and so, you know, you throw in that whole going back to the leaky bucket, you know, anytime these men go out, their whole rest of the world ain't on that. Not to that extent. And these men go out there and they dealing with interacting with other races of women. And then that is where, you know, you start getting the well, why are we even over here? Like, that's where you get into the whole black women have the wrong orientation. But black men who've been taught responsibility, they don't have the wrong orientation. Now, in terms of all the details of that, of like what you need to do and how you need to control your own banks and the economic system, you know, that part, you know, they may not have that part. OK, like all the stuff that they talk about on, you know, live your leisure and stuff like that. Investments. They don't have that part. A lot of black men don't. A lot of black men just simply have get an education, get a good career, you know, take care of your family and be respected. 
But in the black community, it doesn't seem like you can get that. It seems like the disproportionate number of black women have some level of some hardcore feminist ideologies. You know, where where basically they look at you like, yeah, nigga, that's what you're supposed to do. You, we're not giving you respect because giving you respect, playing that subordinate role, being a woman, being feminine, all that other stuff is 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 it's at black women's expense and it's oppressive and we're not going to do it. And it's like, OK, fine. It's not the 1950s or 60s anymore. And this is where, you know, the the, you know, black men go out there and they start linking up with the other races of women that are on that shit. But then black women, what they do is they come through and they just dismiss all of that with colorism and say, oh, see, it's colorism. Uh, It's hard for it not to be, quote unquote, colorism or as pure to appear so because damn near every other woman outside the black community is not freaking um, is not a dark skin, you know, and so. You end up with with that sort of situation. And I'm saying there is validity to the points of, you know, uh, brothers going to Africa, brothers going to the Caribbean and whatnot. But again, from what I've been told, a lot of those women are, you know, being influenced by African-American women because African-American women are the most visible group of women on the planet. And so, you know, who's who do you think is going to be more moved and inspired by an African-American woman? A woman in the Caribbean or Africa or an Asian woman or a Hispanic woman or some other woman that 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 can't relate to a black woman's uh, beauty or appearance. So, you know, just throwing that out there, because I've had the, you know, um, Africans and uh, 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 black men from the UK, you know, who have pointed that out, you know, or in, you know, I know the UK has both African and Caribbean people that are there, but that's what they tell me. That's what they write every time, you know, that point comes up that they're like, hey, brother, it's not the same. And then when I go and I watch some of these videos of these women, you know, in the UK and 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 in what they believe, you know, I'm like, damn, it doesn't really seem to be much different. You know, they they take their playbook right from African American women. Um, but uh not nah, like it, it has to be understood that the complaints about the community, and I'm saying it it, it is a legitimate, it is a legitimate complaint. That if you want submission, you all have to provide something that is worthy of submission. I'm not in disagreement with women on that front. But the reality is, and this is the real ugly part, black women don't even think that we are capable of fixing any of this stuff at the collective level. They don't. So they throw it out there to silence us and shut us up, you know, and somehow we're supposed to still choose them and pick them. That that is that is their their attitude. That is their belief system that we're supposed to, uh, you know, still want to be with them. You know, going back to the, you know, the idea of 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 selling your manhood at a discount. So without if it if black men were not demanding submission and we just basically played the role that many brothers played in arguably the mid to mid seventies to, you know, the, 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 the late nineties, you know, of, you know, just, you know, being on some, not telling her what to do, not trying to operate as any sort of patriarchal, you know, man, a lot of sisters would go for that. They would go for that, you know, and you would just have to accept you know, these, uh, these, you know, you not having as much say as other races of men and whatnot, which I still see all these things are going to be problematic because, you know, the, the next generation of boys never gets to see men operate and function the way that men should. And that's why they're ill-equipped to compete against other races of men. So it ends up being this vicious cycle of boys that, that don't have the capacity. And then the women, use that to further justify why we should be playing, you know, these sort of, you know, uh, 50-50 roles in the first place. That is our place. And that is where black women are most comfortable. You know, and I wish that more of them were just honest about that. You know, they don't, they don't view us in the capacity of leader. They don't view us, you know, in that light. And, and a lot of brothers, myself included, like we can't handle that shit. 
You know, I'd rather be over the fence or, you know, either alone or over the fence than to deal with a woman that views me in that light. You know, and I'm supposed to love her and kiss her up on the mouth and all this. I, I have no desire to be in any sort of such relationship like that. No desire whatsoever. You know, of a woman that did that, that views me like like, you know, her and I on are on par with each other through and through. Right. And then at, and, and then at any given point, because, again, the rest of society, see, when see the thing, the, the messed up part about what the rest of society is on, like that can be thrown in either direction. So when black women are on their feminist shit and black men talk about jumping over the fence or whatever. Right. Black women have the wrong orientation. They can't take that bag anywhere else outside the community. Right. And when it comes to, you know, black men, you know, you know, uh, um, uh, same situation, you know, a man being on some 50, 50, he can't take that shit outside the community. But see, these are two cudgels that each side can beat each other over the head with. Right. So the women can beat the men over the head with, oh, well, you know, you're not. You're not you're not doing what other men are doing. You're not you know, you're not you're not being, you know, a real patriarch, even though the fact that they really don't want you to be. They don't want the problem fixed, but they want to use the complaint of your inability to correct that problem as to a re, as to a justification of why you should play this 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 basically, you know, weakened role as a man. You know, which which me ultimately means, yeah, I mean, the black women like. They'll be in their relationship and they feel their freedom and all this other stuff that they, you know, that they, their ideas of it. But the community will still be broken. Black men will still not control and own and operate the the businesses in the black community. Like they're, they're still not going to, you know, do all of that. And the women will say, why? You know, because so, you know, we get into these. In other words, why can't it be a matriarchy? Like that woman on the Cat Fu series, you know, you know, I know a woman who built his queen a house. You know, you know, like the way the way that she was talking, right? The whole the whole women should be worshipped and men should build for the worship of women, right? The whole this is the whole matriarchy thing, the gynocracy, the 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 the, the divine female principles, right? That we should that we should worship, you know, the women and build for the worship of women. Right. That they are the queens and we must serve the queen as as worker bees in the beehive. And, and and this is where you get into all that divine female principles and overstanding and all that other bullshit. Right. We are the creators of life. Right. And, and women, you know, they're so stupid with their shit. They don't even recognize that that they don't do any of the building. You know, they somehow will claim building vicariously through your labor without having to acknowledge the fact that it was your labor to, to do that. On top of the fact of the stupid idea that you're not going to wake up one day and recognize as a man that, wait a minute, wait a minute, if I don't do this, it doesn't get done. Hence, all the women's complaints about things not being done or repaired or fixed in the community and then further using that as justification as to why, you know, they don't have to get with the program. You see, and, and again, this is this is like at this point, it's cultural. This is deeply rooted in the black community so much. So, you know, I mean, like just like that woman on the cat food series, you know, you know, when cat was laying this shit out, he was she was like, that's the dumbest shit I ever heard. Like, like that's how that is how and, and I don't and I don't I don't dispute that to her that was the dumbest shit she ever heard. Because they have all these stupid ideas in their head because they did not grow up in an environment seeing black men handle business like that. So they they look around and they like, what are you talking about? You know, and then it turns into, oh, 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 I see you on that, you, that Eurocentric uh, 1950s model. That's that's what you want. You want you want you want some Eurocentric shit. Oh, oh, you just trying to imitate the white man. And this this is how they talk. This is what they believe. Now, my frustration lies with a lot of these women who, you know, these more academic women who I know are more intelligent than that. I'm like, bitch, this is a fucking power play. You're trying to make you're trying to make a power play and convince black men 
that we're somehow unique and we've always for millennia operated in this matriarchal matrilineal setup. Right. And that that is how we should be, because, you know, we've been in that for at least three or four generations now. You know, and so, you know, not realizing it's basically they look at us like we're rogue. Like we as black men, we went rogue. Right. That patriarchy existed in the black community. When you had all these, you know, again, all these communities that black men apparently never built, but white people somehow found a way to burn down these communities we never built. Right. Um, Because remember, black men had all the skills back in the day. You come out of slavery. Yeah, you did have some skills not to sit there and, and, and pull some bullshit like Ron DeSantis. But I'm saying black men were the labor force. Black men were the Mexicans of the 1800s. We were the ones that had all the skills well into the 1950s. We had all those skills. And then, you know, the the um, you know, the. Uh, industrialization, working in factories, no longer working on, you know, farms and, and whatnot. And then the sharp decline in the deindustrialization to where now people like men didn't know how to build a house from scratch. They weren't doing that. You had to go to a land developer and go to a, you know, an architect and then they would build the house for you. You know, where before, you know, black men were on some Oregon Trail shit, you know, just walk out somewhere to a field and start chopping down trees and, 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 and then put some shit together. But see, somewhere in the middle, right, you know, during industrialization, deindustrialization, right, once you de once you industrialize and then you deindustrialize, those men don't have those pre-industrial skills anymore because those skills were no longer needed. So you end up with this situation where now you got a population of skillless men. And the women are looking at them like, you know, well, what I need you for type of shit. You know, I can go out here and take my education and go and work for the state and make X amount of dollars to support myself. You know, and then again, all these ideas of I'm not going to bow down to you, yada, yada, yada. And then you also have this aspect of where. You do have dudes that are trying to get something for nothing. You know, I think that even with black women, they try to get something for nothing, you know, because it's like you got black men that will go over the fence and then some of them will do what they're supposed to do. Other ones won't. Other ones will be like, you know, hey, I'm getting the fruits of another man's patriarchy. Right. And then you got black women that they bought so much into the idea of, you know, intrins their intrinsic Afrocentric melanated value that when the brothers go over there to, you know, whatever the other races of women and Maria's cooking them up, you know, a, 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 a an amazing dish. Right. And then, um, you know, he comes back to the community for whatever reason he comes back. You know, black women are completely out of practice because they've been so defiant and having to play that role. You know what I mean? Now it's like they can't compare to some of these other women and how they treat their men and cooking and all that other stuff. You know, I mean, there was a there was a woman that Kat was telling me about uh, that was um, she was uh, she was like mixed race, like no black. But um, uh, she she had two different backgrounds. And, you know, she had a friend that was a black woman and the black woman was. You know, she she was date she didn't date black men, she dated white men. And um there was a conversation that was had between her and another because this woman, this this whatever, this racially ambiguous woman, she dated nothing but black men. And so one day they had a they had a back and forth about, well, you know, hmm, you don't date you don't date sisters. Uh well you don't date black men either. And and they were had they were going at it. Well, anyway, um, I guess the brother laid out, you know, why he was dating these women or whatever. But eventually the racially ambiguous woman uh, and the black woman had a conversation and the, and the racially ambiguous woman basically told her she was like, look, you can't just do nothing. You can't just be pretty like you got to You got to be able to do something 
you know, for a man. Like she was, cause she started picking up on the fact that the sister, like all she knew how to do was be pretty. Like she didn't know how to cook. She didn't know how to like, just, just, she just thought that all she was supposed to do was just be pretty and be the arm candy. And even this, you know, this racially ambiguous woman was like, you can't, ju- you can't just not do anything. And I feel like a lot of sisters, you know, th- you know, that, that is what they have become. You know, that they can't, they cannot do anything or, or feel that they, not they can't do anything. They feel that they don't need to do anything. And again, if, if we were in a vacuum, if black relationships were in a vacuum, if black men only dated black men, black women might be able to get away with their shit a little bit longer. But I, 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 I put a timeline, a time limit on that. But the fact that all this comparing and contrasting is going on, you know, that people do step out and they're quick to identify the things about their culture and the things about their their counterpart that they don't like, I'm like, no, that's that's no longer going to work anymore. Because, you, I mean, you can't, it can't be argued. Like, clearly black men date out more now in 2023 than they did in 1960. That's not even debatable. So there's, so there's a, a much larger uh, a breadth of knowledge about what it really is over the fence. Granted, you got your brothers that every now and again, you get these guys that are just delusional and they think it's nothing but, you know, they're just looking through it through their rose tinted glasses. All right. Because the racism still goes on. The colorism still goes on. The anti-blackness still goes on. But the day to day interpersonal treatment. A lot of sisters can't hold a candle to that shit because their whole disposition is is just they're they're just. They're so anti uh, uh, anti patriarchy, so pro feminism that they've they've pro feminism pro feminismed their way, you know, into nothingness. And they really sit there and think that 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 I don't know their blackness alone is something that black men should value. And and everything that everything the man is interested in, the women don't want to do. You know, hey, I like women with fishnets and open toed uh, shoes and tight black skirts. <laughs> I ain't doing that. I, I shouldn't have to look like I shouldn't have to lose weight. I shouldn't have to. Do- I'm like, God damn, you don't want to do anything. So what am I getting out of this relationship? You don't want to cook. You don't want to fucking, you know, you don't, you don't want to suck dick. You don't want to uh, wear certain outfits. I mean, you, I mean, what do you do? Like, what do I get? Do, do you even smell good when you come around me? Do you wash your ass when you come around me? I mean, God damn. You know what I mean? Like, again, like I said to them, you know, you know, I don't even know if those were the women that got shot. But, you know, I'm sitting there trying to sort out the damn Florida Dollar Tree or Dollar General uh, uh, shooting. You know what I mean? And, 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 and you know, what I felt weird is, you know, the guy, he walks in. I mean, obviously he didn't have a rifle then, but he walks black man and his son walk out the store. He holds the door open for him. Then then the, the, then he, uh, two black women with bonnets, overweight women were behind him. He holds the door for them slightly and I'm like this is some weird shit but any but in any event I was pissed off like just looking at the two women I'm like it is the middle of the goddamn day and y'all walking around with these bonnets and fuzzy flip-flops and then the women will turn around and start bitching about colorism and and and, and anybody checking for them or some shit like that you know I just shake my head it's like it's like damn like it's like y'all really do feel like y'all don't have to do anything you know, and and that's a that, you know that's a far cry from you know even like I'll I'll tell you a grievance I can listen to a woman who is a legitimate four or five on a scale of one to ten, and she's just not a she doesn't have pretty privilege, she's not attractive enough to be able to get a man that uh you know uh makes good money. Because, you know, as far as she just ain't it, she ain't popping men with money, you know, you know, again, the the way that the sexual markets work, you know, women exchange their beauty and and sexuality and sensuality, you know, for a man that is a high earner and men that men go out here in part and make, you know, that type of money so that they can choose the woman that they want. It's a competition between other men. 
You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, you know, yeah, she, you know, then we can get, we can get into the arguments about, you know, she doesn't want me for me and everything, but you know, certain women of a certain caliber of beauty, like you gotta be at that particular level in order to even gain their attention because since they're so desirable, they have a million and one options. So, so you're trying to fight for her affections, you know, and then you have this population of less attractive women that it's like, well, in the system of patriarchy, I got to sit around and wait for some guy to, 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 to ask me for his, for my hand in marriage. And that's not going to happen because I've never gotten those type of reactions. And so then they go into diving into some feminism shit where they want to topple the whole system. And I'm like, God damn, I'm like, really? Like, even when it comes to like corrective promotion for black women, and I'm like, you got to be careful of these women that, you know, they don't, they're just generally unattractive. And they're so mad at the cars that they've been dealt, you know, that they're going to ruin it for everybody else. So while, you know, we need to have, you know, black women on a, being pedestalized and being shown on television and, and so that young girls, you know, don't, you know, like that girl that was getting her hair done and then started crying because she felt that she was ugly. You got to have that, the beauty contest in order for the young black girls to not feel like that. But then you got the unattractive women that are like, fuck the whole system of patriarchy. It, women shouldn't be judged. All beauty contests should be eliminated, right? So then they, they tear all that shit down. You know what I mean? Or, or even the concept or the idea of even establishing or re-establishing one because ah, this is the sexual objectification of women, you know? And, and and the thing is, is like, yeah, like that's a part of sex for women to be objectified by men. It's a part of the attraction. Right. But it's like you already have black women's image that is damaged and injured. And then you have these unattractive women that are trying to come in the space and then trying to eliminate the objectification of women who are already marginalized in the grand scheme of objectification of women. So then you end up with a situation where not, not only are black women seen as unattractive because, due to their lack of promotion or negative promotion, but then when it comes to positive promotion, you got these lesser attractive women who want to come through and they want to smack that down. And they want to make the argument that um, they want to make the argument that um, 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 that we need to do away with that because it's a part of the misogynistic, patriarchal, heteronormative, cisgendered structure. And I'm like, okay, so what are, we, what are you going to do about that little black girl and, and her crying because she feels ugly? What are you going to do about that? You know, and then they make some argument about, yeah, see, that's black men's fault because of colorism. Okay, so colorism is just going to exist and we're not going to have any counter to counter the colorism because uh, you don't want black women being objectified. Is that correct? Yes. I'm like, so basically your solution is to 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 for, for black men to just evaporate and disappear. And then she wouldn't be crying or feel that way. But yet there's no promotion of black women anywhere because you're too afraid of the the the. Black women being objectified like that. Or you get the other group of women that come through and they want there to be no standard and they want any just take a bag of, of just random black women and shake it, you know, as hard as you can, like shake and bake and then throw it against the wall and and whatever sticks sticks. So there's so so you got women that shouldn't even be in that pile that are in that pile. And and they're like, yeah, we need to we need to promote all this equally. Like so you get the, the egalitarian types for every black woman. That's one hundred and thirty five pounds. That's up there and got voluptuous curves. We need to have at least one Gabby Sidibe up there. It's like, yo, we ain't men ain't into Gabby Sidibe. Like we ain't trying to promote yeah, like what is wrong with you? Why are you trying to do you see any other race of woman promoting or any other race of man promoting, you know, the, the fucking Roseannes and shit like that? You see them up there promoting that shit like that is the epitome of fucking white beauty. They, they don't put that. They don't they don't confuse that shit. That's why, if anything, that's why colorism exists in the goddamn first place, because whenever they want to throw up white women up there, they always want to throw up the fine ones. 
You know what I'm saying? Every white woman ain't walking around looking like uh I don't know. Fuck, give me a white woman, random, a random white woman. Uh, I don't even say Natalie Portman. Who's a random white woman that everybody? Uh, Denise Richards in her prime. Like every white woman don't look like that. You know what I mean? But 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 you know, let white media tell it. You know, you know, yes, yes, yes. White women, they all look like Denise Richards, and they're beautiful. And 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 all you non-white men of the world, you should thirst this. Witness it. Witness it. Because this, this is awesome. This is the best. Right? And then you got nothing to counter that shit. Other than some. You know, and then you then you then you got the, the even more retarded shit from these scholarly queer LGBT uh, uh, women that you know then they want to sit there and they be like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Not only do we need Gabby in the building, we need to see some transgender women in the building. We need to wear transgender women. They're beautiful too. You know, it's like, oh my god, oh my god. And then and then you know you just start looking at the the landscape. And I'm not saying that this is the reason why brothers are hopping the fence. I'm just saying it's a contributing factor. It doesn't, it most certainly doesn't help. It most certainly doesn't help because so you got the matriarchy to contend with, the, all the feminism to contend with, all the we don't, we shouldn't have to do shit, you know, to contend with, the, you know, uh, you should be attracted to shit that you're clearly not attracted to, to contend with, uh, you, you know, you should be attracted to men masquerading as women that you're not attracted to, and if you were attracted to it, we'd be quick to call you gay and say, that's, well, I wouldn't date a nigga that dates trans women because that's not a real woman but that's the only time that you say it like the shit is retarded it's just retarded you know what i mean i i just i wish that y'all were honest about the fact that y'all wanted power but i know that you all know that if you said that see you go up there and you're like oh boohoo feel sorry for us oh we're oppressed oh oh we get our ass beat oh Don, danny glover oh you know like, you go up there and you say that people feel sorry for you and they're like yes we need feminism Right. But like I said, when I came online, I'm like, y'all don't make any sense. You know, when black women came online and that's right. And we're getting more degrees than black men and we're killing it. And we have more businesses and we're doing this and we're doing that. Da, 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 da. Right. Then they turn around. We're so oppressed. We're so oppressed. We're so oppressed. I'm like, but five minutes ago you were talking about ain't no nigga on your level. You know, you can't find a nigga on your level. Black men are just so beneath you and they're so sad and dusty and all this other stuff. Then you turn around and start talking about how, you know, the Danny Glovers have you underneath their thumb. I'm like, where is this going on? Where where the hell is this going on? You know what I mean? Or they'll point to like some black celebrity that has lots of money and is with a light skinned woman and be like, see, oppression, oppression. See, anytime niggas get money, they go out there and they got to get the white rights, exotic all, you know, they, they got, they, you know, that, that, that's their, that's their concept of, of systemic oppression. Any, any, any situation where they're not winning or they're losing oppression, you know, and it's like, you know, men don't even have a we don't even have a voice in this in this in this space. I mean, I've listened to Dr. T. Hazan Johnson talk about how, you know, they, they men they will they will shout you out of the room. You know, they will uh, uh, start fucking with your tenure. You know, what I mean, they will shift you around in departments. You know, we don't we don't care for his toxic masculinity. I, you know, that's you know, he, he his his message doesn't re- resonate with this department. You know, that type of bullshit. It's fucked up, you know, but, um, I mean, you know, this is, this is, you know, I'm, I just wish the women were honest about it, you know, and, and is there an element of, of guilt freeness when, you know, when it comes to that? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. I wish, I wish they were honest about that shit. Yeah. Go, you know, I mean, just exactly what Cap, what Captain Solo was trying to do with that Cap Fu series. You know what I mean? That's why that's why when she said it, he backed off immediately. He was like, oh, 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 I'm sorry. In all matriarchies, the woman gives him his kingship. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know we were in a matriarchy. Oh, let me acknowledge what you just said. You know, I mean, I mean, I mean, just I mean, completely broke the whole situation down. You know, but uh, or exposed it. You know, and that's the thing, because, see, he knew at that point, like, he was like, oh, no, no, keep talking, chick. 
No, 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 no. Keep saying what you're saying. Keep pointing out what you're pointing out. Keep doing that shit. <clears throat> because, again, it'll highlight how ridiculous they look. But anyway, that's my video, SWPL. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe. I'll continue to put the links in the description box. You guys can check out those those uh, affiliate links on the two-way stuff. I got to find some more stuff. It takes a while because a lot of the items that I actually have saved in different on a different account, um, I can't like the like it doesn't just link over. It's weird. I don't know. I don't know how exactly to use it, but you type in the name and they give you another vendor or a different vendor. I guess not every not every vendor participates with the affiliate stuff. So I don't know. But anyway, that's all I got to say. That's my video SWP out. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe. Oh, excuse me. Subscribe.